In this video, we're going to go through the stages of mitosis and give a thorough description of what happens during each of those phases. So let's get started. Firstly, what is mitosis? Well, from GCSE, you should know that mitosis is a type of cell division. Obviously, we also have meiosis, which we'll cover in a separate video, but mitosis is a type of cell division. <clears throat> it's the type of cell division that makes body cells, not gametes or sex cells. And with this type of cell division, you have to be able to describe in detail what happens during each of the phases. Now, the importance of mitosis, obviously, it's to make body cells, but we can say that mitosis is needed for growth. It's needed to repair tissues and it's needed to replace cells. So three reasons why mitosis is important. Now mitosis is part of the cell cycle, which I think it's just noting down as well. Now the cell cycle in its entirety consists of interphase followed by mitosis followed by cytokinesis. So let's just briefly mention interphase and what happens during interphase. Interphase actually takes up most of the cell cycle and interphase itself has separate stages. So it has the G1 phase or the growth one phase. It has the synthesis phase or the S phase and it has the G2 phase or the growth two phase. Now, what is actually happening during these stages? Well, in growth one, as the name suggests, growth one phase, the cell is growing in size as it's preparing for cell division. So the cell is growing in size. Organelles are being duplicated or replicated. So for example, we're making more mitochondria, we're making more ribosomes so that the two daughter cells that get produced do have their own and the right number of mitochondria and ribosomes. Also during G1, we've got kind of normal things going on like protein synthesis, making enzymes and things like that. Now during the synthesis phase, this is when the DNA is replicated. Okay, so the chromosomes after DNA replication will now consist of two sister chromatids held together by a centromere. So they'll look like X's, not that you can actually see them during interphase, but they will consist of two sister chromatids held together by a centromere because all of the DNA has been replicated during that synthesis phase of interphase. During G2, another growth phase, so the cell is growing in size. It's carrying out normal cellular functions like respiration and protein synthesis, but also the DNA is checked for any errors that may have occurred during DNA replication. So that would be interphase where the cell is preparing for cell division. Then we're going to go into mitosis proper. Now mitosis consists of these phases. We have number one, prophase, number two, metaphase, number three, anaphase, and number four, telophase. So for mitosis, we're going to remember PMAT, okay? They are the four stages of mitosis. Now let's go through and talk about what happens during each of these phases. So during prophase, which is the first phase of mitosis, the centrioles move to opposite ends of the cell. I actually would say opposite poles of the cell. So you can see those centrioles here. So the centrioles from which the spindle fibers are gonna form are gonna move to opposite poles of the cell and the nuclear membrane starts to break down or disintegrate. Now, what is actually happening to the chromosomes during prophase, because this is what's important. What we say is during prophase, the chromosomes condense and thicken, so they become visible. So you can't actually see the chromosomes during interphase, but when the cell is going into mitosis and in prophase, because the chromosomes condense, get fatter or thicker, they will now be visible. 
So that's what we say for prophase in terms of what's happening to the chromosomes. They condense, they thicken, they become visible. And then other things that happen, the centrioles move to opposite poles of the cell and the nuclear membrane breaks down or the nuclear envelope breaks down. Then we go into metaphase, which is quite easy to spot under the microscope. I always think M for metaphase, M for middle. So if you see the chromosomes in the middle of the cell, you know it's in metaphase. So here, what we can say is the chromosomes line up at the equator and attach to the spindle fibers, which you can see in the diagram there, via their centromere. Okay, so you'll see them lining up like this. The chromosomes all line up individually and they attach to the spindle fibers via their centromeres and they're moved to the equator. <clears throat> Remember, the chromosomes look like this. They look like X's because this is after DNA replication. So each chromosome consists of two identical sister chromatids that are held together by their centromere. And it's the centromere that will also attach those chromosomes to the spindle fibers. So that's metaphase. I've got two more stages to do. So anaphase is stage three. This is another easy one to spot under the microscope because you'll be able to see, like when you do the root tip squash practical, you'll be able to see the sister chromatids being pulled towards opposite poles. So what happens here is the centromere splits. So the centromeres that were holding the sister chromatids together are going to split as the spindle fibers start to contract or shorten. And the sister chromatids are pulled towards opposite poles via their centromeres, okay? Don't just say they move towards opposite poles, they are being pulled towards opposite poles because remember they're attached to the spindle fibers via their centromeres. As the spindle fibers start to shorten or contract, they will be pulled towards the opposite poles. Centromere first, which is why they look like V-shapes, so it's easy to spot. Early anaphase, you'll see them still close to the equator, but late anaphase, you'll see them closer towards the opposite poles of the cell. Number four is telophase. Now, by this point, the sister chromatids have reached the opposite poles. So we'll write that down first. And then the chromosomes start to decondense. So by the end of telophase, the chromosomes will no longer be visible. Now, you'll note that I've used the word chromosomes and sister chromatids. To be honest, they do let you call them chromatids, sister chromatids, or chromosomes. But what I tend to do is I would call this a chromosome. Then during anaphase, when the centromere splits, I would call them sister chromatids being pulled towards opposite poles. And then when they reach the opposite poles, I would start referring to them again as chromosomes. So in telophase, I would refer to them again as chromosomes. And I'd say the chromosomes start to decondense. So by the end of telophase, you will not be able to see those chromosomes anymore. And the nuclear envelopes reform. Okay, but by the end of telophase, you're going to have two nuclei because mitosis is basically nuclear division, which you learn at GCSE, right? So we haven't got two cells at the end of telophase. We've got two nuclei because the nuclear envelope, which disintegrated, you're now going to reform two new nuclear envelopes and you're going to end up with two genetically identical nuclei by the end of telophase um, and then we need to go into cytokinesis where we're actually going to get cell division okay let's just go through this again quickly before we do cytokinesis so prophase 
Centrioles move to the opposite poles, nuclear envelopes break down, chromosomes condense and thicken, chromosomes become visible. Metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the equator and are attached to the spindle fibers via their centromere. Then I call them sister chromatids because the centromere splits and the individual sister chromatids are pulled to the opposite poles using the spindle fibers during anaphase. And then during telophase, the chromosomes will start to decondense, so you'll not be able to see them anymore. And the two nuclear envelopes reform, so we've got two genetically identical nuclei. Let's have a look at cytokinesis. I actually don't like this diagram, by the way, guys, because the diagram is implying that you can see the chromosomes and you can't actually see the chromosomes and the chromosomes will not look like X's anymore. So if you could see them, they would not look like X's. In fact, what you would see is just kind of like a nucleus like this. You would not be able to see individual chromosomes within the nucleus. So I don't really like the diagram. Um, but cytokinesis comes after mitosis. So it's the third stage of the cell cycle. Remember, we have interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis. And cytokinesis is where we've already got our two new nuclei, but now the cytoplasm divides two new cell membranes form to create two genetically identical daughter cells. So by the end of cytokinesis, we've got two genetically identical daughter cells. They'll be genetically identical because remember, we replicated the DNA during interphase and then we separated the sister chromatids. So each daughter cell will have the exact same genetic information. They will also be diploid. Should we say that as well? There'll be two diploid cells because the chromosomes are in pairs or homologous pairs. They still have pairs of chromosomes. We never separated the pairs of chromosomes, not like we do in meiosis. So the daughter cells will still contain pairs of chromosomes. They'll be diploid. This is a human. We're talking about 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes in each of the daughter cells and they are genetically identical, okay? So that's what we've got at the end of mitosis. Let's have a look at a little quiz to finish or a little summary. So we've got a description of some of the things that happen during the cell cycle. It could be interphase, it could be mitosis, it could be cytokinesis. We have to put the stage as specifically as possible. So the DNA is replicated. Well, this would be interphase, and if we're being really specific, it would be the synthesis phase of interphase. The nuclear envelopes reform to give two new nuclei. So this would be mitosis, but it would be telophase of mitosis. Chromosomes line up at the equator. Again, this is mitosis, but it would be metaphase. Remember, M for metaphase, M for middle. Chromosomes condense and become visible. This would be mitosis. It would be prophase, the first phase of mitosis. Centromeres split. This would be mitosis and it would be anaphase, early anaphase, as the spindle fibers start to shorten or contract. The sister chromatids are pulled to opposite poles. This would also be anaphase. The cytoplasm divides would be cytokinesis because we're onto the final stage of cell division here. The nuclear envelope breaks down. That would be prophase. I hope you found that video useful. Let me know in the comments and stay tuned because we will also be posting a video on meiosis a little bit later on, which by the way, you don't have to know in as much detail as mitosis, but there are some extra bits and bobs like crossing over and independent assortment, which students can struggle to get their head around. So make sure you check out that video too.